Okay, now we're moving on to some big boy football. Not that I don't love the other football, because I do. Uh, we're going to be very intimately familiar with Conference USA moving forward this year. But we're moving over to the Big 12. We have Kansas State, an 11.5 point favorite now on the road at Oklahoma State. And this game carries an over-under of 54.5 points. And it kicks off Friday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. This also opened pretty low with Kansas State minus 7. Uh, and the market was all over that. It's still climbing. Now we're even in dead space. It's moved uh, off of 7. It's moved through 10 and climbing yet. Kansas State, they get Christian Duffy back. He's the right tackle. This is his first start of the season. He's an NFL prospect. This is a very big get for them. They're also returning Treshawn Ward, uh, who missed last game. But it's been the DJ Giddens show in the backfield. He just carried the ball 30 times for 207 yards in their last game against UCF two weeks ago. Uh, But Duffy's addition is big because Oklahoma State, they're not great, but there's one thing they can do, and that is rush the passer. So you're shoring up that right side a bit more with an NFL prospect. Uh, weather forecast says this may be a little bit of a windy game, at least to start 15 mile an hour sustained winds that will be tapering to below 10 miles an hour by the time the second half rolls around. Now I would normally look for a first quarter or first half under they're giving me 27 and a half, not 28. So that wasn't that exciting. Uh, if you do have 28, it's really heavily due something I'm not terribly interested. The other thing is Oklahoma state is a complete dumpster fire. There's no two ways about it. They lost to South (laughs) Alabama 33-7. They allowed 34 points to Iowa State, who was 124th in offense. I mean, in the Kansas State game last year, is kind of what kicked things off for Oklahoma State. Their downward spiral. Kansas State beat them 48-0. Will Howard threw for 300 yards and four touchdowns. And they just really haven't recovered since then. The Pokes will be starting Alan Bowman at quarterback. Uh, Mike Gundy said that on Tuesday, that he's been getting about 60% of uh, the starting reps and the other two quarterbacks are getting 40%. I'm not really sure why anybody else sees the field. Uh, this is probably the worst quarterback room in the power five, but Bowman is still the best by, by my estimation, by a very, very healthy margin. I don't even know why it's a question to be honest against Iowa state last time out, they had six plays per drive. And uh, that's a defense that just allowed 50 a game last week against Oklahoma. So they're going not quite three and out, but they're, but they're not moving the chains very often against the Cyclones. Coverage has been the main issue for the Pokes. They allowed 350 passing yards to Rocco back. To, like, seriously, he's averaging 184 yards per game outside of that. And they allowed him to throw for 350. So it's not setting up well against Will Howard and a talented Kansas State offense. Even with the, uh, even on the road, the win, that'll taper. Look, I, I'm looking to Will Howard's passing yardage here. Uh, it, it's probably going to be pretty lofty, but I don't know that there's a number as long as it doesn't start with a three that I'm not willing to bet over here. Neither team is great against pass, though. Kansas State, they've allowed 600 yards through the air in their last two games. The difference for me is the buy-in. Kansas State feels put together. Oklahoma State is absolutely falling apart. They do not project well. And the Wildcats can defend the run, and their offense, in my opinion, is exponentially better. So that's kind of how I shake things out. How do your numbers shake this one out? Yeah, Brett, I liked some of your classifications of these two teams, and it's hard to disagree. Now, both these teams were off last week, so again, they should be fresh, and that's good because you got a home stretch now of, what, eight straight games for each of them, all conference games. Uh, so get ready, buckle up. This is the start of what's going to be uh, a tough stretch for both these teams. My numbers have this pretty clear. Um but my numbers have been off in this range before, and they will be again. I have Kansas State minus 13. Uh, It's an 82% win expectancy. Kansas State's a really good football team. I have them power rated number 19 nationally. It's the third best in the Big 12 behind only Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, I think those two teams are playing this week, maybe. I don't know. I haven't heard much about that game. I'm sure we'll get to it on a future episode, Brett. May may Um, not be important. (laughs) Yeah, right? Um, I'm excited to talk about that one. But for this game here, the Kansas State offense is top 10 in the country. The defense is number 35. The Wildcats have outscored their opponents by 4.2 points per game more than would be expected of the average top 25 team against their schedule. That's number 14 nationally. And that's really good. Um, With no Oklahoma on the schedule, Kansas State is only projecting as an underdog in one game the rest of the way this season. That's at Texas in week 10. They have a one in four chance to reach that 10 plus regular season win mark, which is really, really good for the program in Manhattan. Yeah. And I just want to jump in really quick. Kansas State fell out of the AP poll. They lost one game on a walk-off 60-whatever-yard field goal to Mizzou on the road. And all of a sudden, they're just being discounted. They're being tossed out. I haven't heard anything about Kansas State. The fact that they opened as a seven-point favorite here, 
yeah, go go back if you need to hit the the rewind button a couple to hear what Kelly just hashed out there. Kansas State's still really good, guys. They are really good, and I agree with you, Brett. I do want to make one distinction, one that we've made many times. I have them power rated number 19, like I said. Their most deserving ranking right now, given the schedule they played, and again, they've only played four games. Many teams have played five, so that gives you a better chance to have a better resume. Their most deserving ranking for me right now is number 35. Um, so I wouldn't have them, quote, ranked either if I was filling out a, an AP poll ballot. To be fair to those voters, I, I rag on them quite a bit. I want to be fair when I can. Um, so that's where they are right now. There are opportunities, though, for Kansas State down the road to pick up big quality wins, ones that I think would put them in my most deserving top 25, and they're going to be favorites in those games. That's, that's the important thing here as we project forward. This is a really good football team, as you said. Uh, turning it over to Oklahoma State, a team that <laughs> I believe you classified as a dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go that far, but it's hard for me to stop too much short of that. At 2-2 two and two, and with 0.8 fewer wins than expected through five weeks, I'll say this, this season has not gone as expected in Stillwater. Uh, The Cowboys' power rating has fallen 6.8 points since the preseason. That's the sixth most nationally in the negative direction, the direction you don't want to be going. Um, As a result, their chances to go bowling have decreased from a staggering 83% in the preseason. I I had a 5-6 and chance they'd go bowling in the preseason. That's down to to 21% chance currently, a 1-5 and now. I mean, that's a huge swing. This offense is much worse than projected. They're now number 74. That's the second worst in the Big 12. And the defense is simply FBS average. They're number 64 nationally. Oklahoma State is the only Big 12 team, Brett, that my numbers do not project to be a favorite in any remaining game this season. I had to double check that. I was like, really? Because they're not the worst team in the Big 12, but they're actually pretty darn close by my power ratings. Um, Yes, winning on the road is the hardest thing to do in college football. I've said that before. I'll say that again. But the Wildcats have the advantage on both sides of the ball in this one. I expect them to come out and get the win. Bottom line, I have Kansas State minus 13. It's an 18% chance that Oklahoma State uh, moves to 1-1 one and one in conference play. All else equal, Brett, uh, Kansas State is the primary contender to Texas and Oklahoma. They currently have a 30, 34% chance to make it to Arlington if they win. It only rises to a 37% chance because, again, they're expected to win this game with an 80-plus percent win expectancy. So the, the the projections are already baking in essentially you know, eight-tenths of a win. You get that extra two-tenths. It's not going to improve your projections that much. So they'd stay third with a 37% chance with a win. With a loss, it would hurt because it would be an unexpected loss down to a 16% chance, which is actually still third, though. That's again, goes to show you what the numbers think of Kansas State's power rating. And for Oklahoma State, it's a less than 1% chance, kind of regardless of outcome. So uh, this game, to me, all about Kansas State. Can they avoid stubbing their toe on the road? Are they not looking ahead to that game in Lubbock next week, which is going to be against a more talented team, even though Texas Tech record may not reflect that? That is a a highly uh, power-rated team. So don't look ahead. It's hard to win on the road. But Kansas State, just take care of your business, and you'll still be in that hunt for Arlington. Yeah, the Big 12 has just been a real big disappointment this year, especially after last year, how good it was. Just not, It feels like there's Texas and Oklahoma, and we just said Kansas State's a very good team. But like you said, maybe looking ahead to Texas Tech. Texas Tech has been a big disappointment. TCU, just coming off a loss, inexcusable loss, in my opinion, to West Virginia. It's it's bad news in, in the Big 12, in my opinion here. And, and really, this just feels like a take-care-of-business game for Kansas State. Uh, I don't love laying the points since it's moved through seven, moved through ten, well, moved off seven, moved through ten. Uh, yeah, like I said, you, you can get juice if you want to lay the first half of Kansas State. It is juice, but it is minus six and a half. That's probably my favorite lean on the board here. Uh, Oklahoma State, like I said, it, dumpster fire, but like projecting <laughs> forward. They beat Central Arkansas, who by my measures is a good FCS team. But they only beat them by 14 at home. And then they beat Arizona State, who's in just as much disarray as Oklahoma State is on the road. And then the last two games have just been real bad for them. They feel like a team that's on the verge of collapse. When they do, it's going to be ugly. Like that 48-0 kind of loss that they had last year, the same team. It doesn't just feel like a down year to me either. Uh, I really don't know where this program is headed. I would probably take under their their 21.5 team total if we're talking, uh, talking bets here. Minus 125 at FanDuel. Don't hate that. That's that and uh, Lane Kansas State in the first half are probably my two favorite favorite bets on the board here. Got to mention it. Nobody's better against the spread than Chris Kleiman in the FBS. He's got 64% cover rate, and that includes being 4-1 and one against the spread as a road favorite. But I'd bet that he covers the opening line rather than where this line may close at if we're uh, splitting hairs here. <laughs> 